Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, we got 12 games tonight to go over. So let's get started. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you're not, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, be notified when new video drops. And thank you for watching anyways. So I will s start this off with game one between New Jersey and Buffalo. This is Taylor Hall's first game against his former team. Sabres won this one 4-3 in shootout. The first goal was scored 9-0-3 into the second period. Eric Stahl's third from Taylor Hall. First point against a former team. And Brandon Montour. 18-35 into the second. Ty Smith scores his second of the year on the power play from P.K. Subban and Pavel Zaka. Minute 37 into the third. Andreas Janssen scores his first goal as a New Jersey Devil from Jack Hughes and Damon Severson. 218 in, so less than a minute later. Tobias Reeder scores his third from Cody Eakin. I believe that is Eakin's first point as a saver. And Colin Miller. The 1056, Victor Olsen scores his fourth. Power play goal from Rasmus Dahlin and Taylor Hall. And at 1441, New Jersey ties it at three. Yanni Kuokinen scores his first career goal from Michael McLeod and Nathan Bastian. Then the shootout, Jack Eichel scores the shootout winning goal. So that's your winner. And it was a fairly even game. Uh, shots on goal were 34-31 in favor of New Jersey. Face-offs was probably your biggest discrepancy. 61-39 in favor of Buffalo. Power play, both teams had 1 for 5. Penalty minutes, both teams had 10. Hits, both teams had 17. Hit blocks, both teams had 12. Giveaways 7 to 2, New Jersey was 7. So, like I said, it was a fairly even game. Goalies, Scott Wedgwood had 28 saves for a 903 save percentage, and Linus Olmark 31 saves for a 912 save percentage. First star, Ty Smith, one goal, one assist. I did not see an assist from him. Yeah, he didn't have an assist. He only had one goal. Sorry about that. Yeah, one goal, plus one, and 17.50 a time on ice. Jack Hughes, one assist, plus one, 23 minutes, 49 seconds of time on ice. And Victor Olsen, one goal, even, and 21.08 of time on ice. I don't know how Jack Hughes gets the second star with one assist. Taylor Hall had two assists against a former team. How does he not get the second star at least? I mean, I don't get it. I really don't get this whole three-star thing a lot of the times. It, it seems really convoluted and just stupid. There's a few of them tonight are just like, why? Alright, on to Toronto versus Edmonton. This was a pretty good back-and-forth game. Both teams wore their reverse retro jerseys, which it was weird seeing Edmonton in those jerseys. They didn't seem right. The Toronto ones looked more like a Toronto style, but it had gray all across the shoulders, which was... I thought it was weird personally, but that's just me. Alright. Anyways. Edmonton won this one 4-3 in overtime. First goal of the game went to Dominic Cahoon, his first of the year from Leon Dreisaitl. Then at 17:46, William Nylander responded. Fourth goal of the year from John Tavares and Ilya Mikheyev. Then at 1946, Josh Archibald scored his second of the year from Connor McDavid and Tyler Enos. Or Ennis. I've heard it said both ways, so I'm not sure how to actually pronounce his last name properly. So, sorry to him ahead of time. Alright, let's see. Second period, 6-13 in. Connor McDavid, 6th. Power play goal from Tyson Berry. 8-08. Austin Matthews, 6th from Mitch Marner and Jake Muzzin. The 9-16 Toronto ties it again. Zach Hyman, 2nd. Power play goal from John Tavares and Miko Lettinen. Uh, that is Miko Lettinen's first point of the year, I believe, for Toronto. Alright then, it only took 42 seconds in overtime for Connor McDavid to score a 7th from Leon Dreisaitl and Tyson Berry. It was honestly a beautiful goal. If you have a chance, go look up the video. It is an amazingly good goal. No matter how you feel about McDavid, the goal was great. Not gonna lie, I'm not a fan of McDavid personally, and I thought it was an amazingly beautiful goal. Just because you don't like somebody and don't like the way they play, does not mean that they can't be 
creating awesome plays. So, just saying that now. Alright, shots on goal, 31-29 favor Edmonton. Face-offs, 58-42 in favor of Edmonton. Both teams, 1-2 for two on a power play. Both teams, 4 minutes on penalties. Hits were 19-17 in favor of Edmonton. And blocks were 16-10 in favor of Toronto. And giveaways were 10-8 Edmonton with 10. Anderson for Toronto had 27 saves for 971, I'm sorry, 871 save percentage. Koskinen, 26 saves for 897 save percentage. Three stars. First star, Connor McDavid, two goals, one assist, plus one, and 23 minutes, 54 seconds of time on ice. Austin Matthews, your second star, one goal, minus one, and, uh, yeah, he was minus one, I'm sorry, and 22.41 in time on ice. Third star, Leon Dreisaitl, two assists, plus two, 23.45 of time on ice. And let's get started with the Pittsburgh Penguins and the New York Rangers. Sorry, I'm yawning out, son. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, 7.39 into the first. Jason Zucker scored his second of the year from Pierre Olivier. I believe that's how you pronounce that, Olivier? Yo uh, Joseph or Joseph? His second assist of the year, and Kasperi Kapanen. Then at 13.52, the Rangers respond. Brendan Lemieux scores his first from Philip D. Giuseppe and Ryan Lindgren. Then at 19.30, Pittsburgh takes the lead again. Brandon Tanev's third from Pierre Oliver Olivier Joseph and Teddy Bluger. Then at 7.20 in the second period, Kevin Rooney scores his first a shorthanded goal from Keandre Miller and Ryan Strom. 9.42, Kasperi Kapanen scores his second of the year from Evgeny Malkin. Makes it a one-goal Pittsburgh lead again. And the Rangers tie it again. Chris Kreider's third from Jacob Truba and Keandre Miller. At 16.01, the Rangers take the lead 4-3. Artemi Panarin's fourth power play goal from... I wrote Pav Pavel. <laughs> I was supposed to say Pavel. Pavel Bugnevich. And Tony D'Angelo. That is D'Angelo's first point of the year. He's been kind of in the doghouse so far. He's been benched a healthy scratch a few times. So, hopefully he gets back into the game. He seems to have a, from all the reports, he seems to have attitude problems. So, hopefully he can work that out. Because he has a lot of talent and he deserves to be playing. So, it kind of sucks to see him not play. But, good to see him get a point. 9-18 into the third, Jake Gensel's third from Cody Cece and John Marino. Then overtime, Sidney Crosby with the winning goal, 2-27 in, his fourth of the year, from Pierre-Olivier Joseph and Ryan Rust. Alright, shots on goal were 38-34 in favor of Pittsburgh. Face-offs, 57-43 in favor of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh not good on the power play, 0 for 4. Rangers 1 for 5. Penalty minutes 10-8 in favor uh, Pittsburgh with 10. Hits 25-22 in favor of the Rangers. Blocks 13-9 in favor of the Rangers. And giveaways 19-11. Rangers with 19. DeSmith had 30 saves for 882 save percentage. Georgiev 33 saves for 868 save percentage. First star, Sidney Crosby, a goal plus one and 1850 a time on ice. It's nice to see Crosby score the goal, the winning goal. He has not I don't know if it's age or all the injuries or both mixture of all those catching up on him, but he and Malkin have not had great starts to the year. Crosby better than Malkin, obviously, but it's been a slow start for them, but the team has done well. That's, that's the good news for Pittsburgh fans. So, I mean, once those two get started, who knows how this team's going to do. They could do a heck of a lot better than they have already, and they've done pretty well. All right, Keandre Miller had two assists tonight, plus one at 20 minutes, 49 seconds of time on ice. Good to see him getting those two assists. He has played really well. I've been watching the Ranger games, and he's been really good for them so far. And this guy, the Pierre Olivier Joseph, he's been doing really well for Pittsburgh. I mean, three assists tonight, plus three in 25-58. He was one of the guys that brought in when... Uh, who was it? Was it Ricola? Yeah, Ricola and Pedersen 
all both got hurt in the same night, and they needed to bring up defenders. And this guy came in, and he's done pretty well since he came up. I'm, I'm finding it hard to believe he's not gonna be that he's gonna be sent back down. All right, on to the Islanders in Philadelphia. Philly won this one, 3-2. Good to see Philly on the winning side again. All right, scoring started 3:38 into the first. Jakub Voracek, second of the year from Claude Giroux and Scott Lawton. Then at 13.55 of the first, Kevin Hayes, fourth from James Van Riemsdyk. Although I wrote Romsdyk there. Or Riemsdyk, I guess it could be pronounced. And Ivan Provorov. It is Riemsdyk, I misspelled that, so it's supposed to be an I, not an O. Sorry to James Van Riemsdyk for that one. Don't like misspelling people's names. Alright, 7.31 in the second. At this point, it's 2 nothing Philly. They look like they're in command. Nope, 7.31 into the second. Jordan Everly's third from Adam Pellich and Brock Nelson. Then the tying goal, 11.46 in the second. Scott Mayfield's first from Nick Letty and Matthew Barzell. No scoring in the third. Overtime. Scott London gets the winner. 3.16 in from Shane Gostaspare. Good to see Gostaspare back in the lineup and getting a point. That is good to see. All right, Islanders 28-17. They won. They won the shots on goal category. So Philly, I swear they've been outshot every single game, and not by small margins on most of them either. So they they really need to start taking some shots because I mean, coming from a Ducks fan, it doesn't matter what the percentages are. You're not gonna win long if you keep that up. All right, 50-50 was the face-offs. 0 for 4 on the power play for the Islanders, and 0 for 1 for Philly. So, 2 to, two to 8 penalty minutes, 8 for Philly. 31 to 24, Islanders win the hits. Blocks, 14-11, favoring Philly. And both teams had 10 giveaways each. For Lamov, 14 saves for 824 save percentage. Carter Hart, 26 saves for 929 save percentage. Three stars tonight were Scott Lawton, the game-winning goal in overtime, plus an assist, plus one, and 13.57 time on ice. Definitely took advantage of his time. Uh, Scott Mayfield, your second star, one goal even in 19.48 time on ice. And Matthew Barzell, one assist, even in 22.30 time on ice. All right, on to Boston versus Washington. Ovechkin has returned for Washington. Yay! Good to see him back. Really glad to have him back. I really think if anybody in the last 20 years has really been screwed over by two lockouts and a COVID shortened year and or two COVID shortened years, it's Ovechkin. If he hadn't lost all that time, this guy would be a lot closer to Gretzky's record than he is even now of goals in his career. So I feel bad for the guy. I'm not sure he's going to be able to do it now because of these last two seasons. He had a chance, but these two shortened years, I think it really going to hurt him. And losing the last four or five games because of the COVID protocols really hurt, too. And also, this is Zanino Chara's first game against his former team, Boston. All right, this one, the Capitals won 4-3 in overtime. I know at one point during this game, uh, Zanino Chara <laughs> deflected a puck with his own stick into his own face, unfortunately. <laughs> I believe he did come back in the game, but those sort of things are unfortunate when they happen. All right, 18.06 into first. Nicholas Backstrom's fifth for Washington. Then, 5.22 in the second. Trevor Van Riemsdyk's first goal as a Washington Capital from Brendan Dillon and Nicholas Backstrom. That's 17, no, I'm sorry, 10.03. Richard Ponick got his first of the year. Power play goal from Tom Wilson and Alex Ovechkin. Ovechkin with an assist. All right. That point is three nothing. Then at seventeen thirty two, Nick Ritchie, his fourth of the year on the power play for Boston from David Krejci and Patrice Bergeron, makes it three one. Okay, for some reason I have a goal from John Gabriel Pajot. I must have forgot to delete that. So ignore that third period goal on the Washington side. Six oh three into the third, Brad Marchand's fifth from Charlie McAvoy and. Patrice Bergeron, that 19:02, 58 seconds left in the game. Washington's out 3-2. Charlie McAvoy scores his first from David Pasternak. Good to see him back from injury. 
he had surgery, I believe it was, on his hip. So good to see him get a point in his return from Patrice Bergeron as well. Then it only took 28 seconds in overtime for Alex Ovechkin to score a second of the year for Nicholas Backstrom and John Carlson to win the game. It really was quick, and it was a good goal too. All right, Boston outshot Capitals 43-23, doubled them up. Then on the face-offs, Boston won 55-45. Power play, Boston won for four, Washington won for one. Penalty minutes, Washington eight, Boston two. Hits 38-15 Washington. That's kind of surprising to see that kind of dominance on the hit chart against Boston of all teams. Blocks 26-10 in favor of Washington. Giveaways both team with nine. Tukarask 19 saves, 826 save percentage for Boston. And Vanacek continuing his awesome play this year. 40 saves for 930 save percentage. Alex Ovechkin a goal and assist even and 14-24 time on ice. I'm kind of surprised he played so little tonight. But it is his first game back after like a week and a half off. So I guess it makes sense at the same time. Ease him back in. Then Vitek uh, Vanacek, like I said, 40, sa 40 saves on 43 shots against for 9.30 save percentage. This guy's been amazing since uh, Samsonov went out with the COVID protocols. He has been killing it. And he's going to keep doing that if, at the rate he's going, so keep an eye on that. I mean, you might have a goalie controversy here coming up for Samsonov if this kid keeps playing this way. All right, third star, Patrice Bergeron, three assists, plus one, and 17.59 a time on ice. All right, on to Dallas versus Carolina. Can Dallas keep the power play dominance going, and can they keep the winning streak going? Yes and no. Four to one. I had that backwards. It's four to one, Carolina one. <laughs> oh, my God. I swear I go over these things. I don't know how I look over this. Anyways, first period, Vincent Trocek's third from Martin Nechas. And Steven Lorenz, that was Trocek's third of the year. Then at 6.55 of the first, Vincent Trocek's fourth on the power play from Sebastian Ajo and Jordan Stahl. Second period, 8.42 in, Andrei Sveshnikov, fourth goal of the year. Power play goal from Sebastian Ajo and Vincent Trocek. Then at 10.21, Ryan Dezingle got his second power play goal from Martin Nechas and Jake Gardner. Then, like I said, Dallas' power play kept going at least. 9.36 into the third, Joe Pavelski's fifth on the power play from Alexander Radulov and John Klingberg. Dallas did not do great in this game. Uh, they had 11 shots on goal. Wow. Coming from someone who's a Ducks fan and his team doesn't take a dang shot for the life of them. Uh, that, that's, uh, whew, that's pretty bad. Uh, Carolina only had 26. That's more respectable, more normal. Uh, 53 uh, face-off percentage for Carolina to 47. Dallas 1 for 6. 3 for 5 on the power play was Carolina. Penalty minutes 12 to 10. Carolina with 12. Hits 38-26. Dallas with 38. Blocks 14-12. Dallas with 14. And giveaways 11-6. Dallas with 11. So, Kadobin started this game. 12 saves, 750 save percentage. He was pulled. Ottinger came in. 10 saves, 1,000 save percentage. So, he calmed it down once he came in, at least. Peter Mrazek started the game. Before he even faced a shot, his own player, unfortunately, came in and slid into him and it to me it looked like the skate caught his wrist and cut his wrist now it was on the outside it looked like so i'm not too worried about like cutting the car not the car the uh, the artery there but you can still cut tendons in that back there so it could still be a severe injury we'll have to see how that works out it, he was only in there for like two minutes so he never faced the shot on goal even reimer came in Made 10 saves, 909 save percentage. So, I mean, obviously Carolina, once he got hurt. Ironically, the guy who slid into him, I forget his name, he was a rookie. Um, a Carolina rookie, too. 
Uh, he slid into him, hurt him, but then was later hit by Blake Como, and looked like he separated his shoulder on the boards. So, kind of, I don't know if you want to call that karma, or if you want to call that just bad luck for a rookie, because, ugh, take out your own goalie, then you get hurt. Ugh, it was not good. Good night for that kid. All right, three stars, Vincent Trocek. Two goals, one assist, plus one, and 18.50 a time on ice. Martin Natras, two assists, plus one, and 17.30 a time on ice. And Sebastian Ajo, two assists, even, and 19.59 a time on ice. All right, so let's move on to Nashville versus Tampa. And I'll tell you this much, there were quite a few scrums in this one. I remember at one point watching this and seeing Kalen Foote, uh, I forget who he had. He had someone bent over along the boards with the referee holding the guy, unfortunately. He was just throwing glove punches, uppercuts in the guy's head. It was like, oh, referees, you guys are just screwing up constantly with us. Ugh. Anyways, the scoring began 17.55 into the first. Ryan Ellis gets his first of the year for Nick Cousins and Philip Forsberg. Then at 3.33 of the second, Tyler Johnson's first on the power play from Anthony Mantha. I'm sorry, Ant Anthony Mantha, wild wow, thing of Detroit. Because that Detroit and Tampa had a good rivalry going. This might be a good second game. I think they play tomorrow. Uh, Anthony Sorelli and Mikhail Serkachev on the assist on that one. 641 the second. Kalen Foote gets his first career goal. I believe he's only like 50 odds on behind his dad's career number. From Mikhail Sergachev and Braden Point. And at 805, Victor Hedman second from Anthony Sorelli and Alex Kalorn. And at 1727, obviously Tampa was killing in the second period. Steven Stamkos third. Power play goal from Victor Hedman and Braden Point. The usual type of uh, Steven Stamkos. Slap shot goal in the on the power play, you know, the one where he falls the one knee and just slaps it in. It actually, I believe it hit the goal, it bounced up in, but it worked. Sorry about the beeping in the background. I'm going to watch it beeping. I, won't, I don't even know where the heck it is. Where are you, watch? It's up on my TV somewhere. I can't find it. Anyways, seven minutes into the third, Matthew Olivier. First of the year, I believe, first of his career. Power play goal from Ryan Johansson and uh, Roman Yossi. That 18-26. Oh, my God. When was beeping stop? There we go. Victor Arvidsson second from Michael Granlund and Philip Forsberg. And just to throw this out there, 10-29 of the third, Dante Fabro fights Yanni Gord. Then at 17-33 of the... Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. 17-33 of the second, Mark... Uh, not Mark. Borbieski instigates a fight with Pat Maroon, so a couple of fights in this game, and at the end of the game, I know that uh, Yanni Gord was yelling at somebody on the national side, so I think there's going to be some fireworks next time these two meet. It might be more interesting. might be worth watching the full game instead of just part of the game. All right, shots on goal, 33-26 in favor of Tampa. Face-off, 62-38 in favor of Tampa. Both teams had two goals on the power play. Nashville 2 for 5. Tampa 2 for 7. Penalty miss 34-30. Uh, not Tampa, I'm sorry. Uh, Nashville with 34. Hits 21-17 in favor of Tampa. Blocks 11-10 in favor of Tampa. Giveaways Tampa with 2. Nashville with 0 giveaways. That's incredible in itself. Most teams at least get 1. Um, Pekka Rene, 29 saves, 879 save percentage. Vasilevsky, 23 saves, 885 save percentage. Victor Hedman, 1 goal, 1 assist, plus 1, and 28-39 at time on ice. Steven Stamkos, 1 goal, plus 1, 21-26 at time on ice. And Pekka Rene, 29 saves on 33 shots against for 879 save percentage. I don't get that. At all. He allowed four goals. He had less than 900 save percentage. And he wasn't even the winning goalie. Why? Why is he the third star? Like I said, there's a few of these tonight I, I just don't understand. It's like, I know he faced more shots than Vasilevsky. But come on. Alright, Florida versus Detroit. 
Florida won this one 3-2 in overtime. Scoring began 3-0-6 into the game. There were a lot of quick goals in the games tonight. Alexander Barkov got his second of the year on the power play from Jonathan Huberdo and Aaron Eckblad. Then at 15-02, Anthony Mantha ties it up with his second of the year from Vladislav Nemeshnikov and Taro Hyros, I think so you said that. Then at 1659, Detroit takes the lead. Tyler Bertuzzi's fifth from Dylan Larkin and Mark Stahl. Then with one second left in the period. One second. Keith Yandel second on the power play from Patrick Hornquist and Alexander Barkov. And that's all the scoring in regulation. No goals in the second. No goals in the third. 2.45 into overtime. Alexi Heponiemi. Or Heponiemi, I think is how they pronounced it. Scores first career goal from Alexander Duclair. Again, Duclair with, I think he may have one goal this year, if that. And he has six assists. For a goal scorer, he's not goal scoring. He's doing the opposite. He's doing six assists right now to one or zero goals. But still, you're contributing. Can't complain too much, right? And honestly, Florida has outperformed how I thought they were going to. They actually have done pretty well at 4-0-1, I think they are now. Because they've had a few games canceled already. But they're technically undefeated in regulation. Well, they are undefeated in regulation. They only had the one overtime loss. So, hey, then I feel bad for Thomas Grice for Detroit. Still looking for that first win as a Red Wing. He keeps getting overtime losses. He just cannot get that win. I feel bad for the guy. All right, 27-26, the shots in favor of Detroit. 52-48, the faceoffs in favor of Detroit. Florida was 2-for-3 on the power play. Detroit 0-for-4. Eight penalty minutes for Florida to 6 for Detroit. Hits were 19-14 in favor of Florida. Blocks 12-8 uh, in favor of Detroit. Giveaways 10-9, Detroit with 10. Bobrowski for Florida, 25 saves and 9-26 save percentage. And Grice, 23 saves, 8.85 save percentage. Alexi Heponiemi, one goal, plus one, and 9.30 a time on ice. So he did not play much in this game. He is a rookie. So he's probably playing fourth line right now. And, but he got that winner in overtime. Who knows, maybe his minutes might go up next game. Alexander Barkov, one goal, one assist, minus one, and 23.38 a time on ice. And Anthony Mantha, one goal, plus one, 18-14 in time on ice. Alright, Calgary versus Montreal. This one had an interesting incident in it. Dylan Dubé for Calgary had a really questionable hit on Kakaniami for Montreal. Uh, by the way, the final score of this one was 2-0, Calgary won. But um, the hit, it looked like Dubé launched up and into uh, Kakaniemi's head with an, either his forearm or his elbow. So we'll have to see what kind of discipline he gets for it because they're really cracking down on that sort of stuff ever since the whole con concussion issue has really come front and center. That's why I think they jump in on all the fights that break out anymore. Ruin it. At least in that. I mean, some of the hitting... Sometimes the hits, it's very hard to tell. Dubé isn't very big, so he definitely jumped up into this hit, which makes it definitely illegal, especially since he made contact with the head under current criteria. That should garner him at least a fine. I, I personally believe if Kakanami is injured, I am one of those who believes if you injure somebody with some dirty play, you deserve to be out as long as they are, but... That's not how it works. So, Dubé, I think, will probably get... He doesn't have a history. So, at most, I think he'll get, like, a game. But Fiala had no history. And he got three games for the hit from behind. So, we'll have to see what happens with Dubé. We'll probably find out. Is it Sunday tomorrow? I'm not sure if they're playing tomorrow. If they're playing tomorrow, we'll find out before the game. If they're not playing, we'll probably find out Monday before the game. All right. 3.34 into the first. Johnny Goudreau scores his fifth. On the power play from Elias, I believe it's Elias, Elias Lindholm and Matthew Kachuk. I was kind of surprised Kachuk only has two assists too. 
1928 into the third empty nerve for Michael Backlund from Elias Lindholm. So, it was a goalie duel type of game. I mean, technically Calgary won it early at 334 into the first. Like I said, there were a lot of early period goals in this game. In this, in this evening, in this evening's games. Let me say it correctly. Montreal outshot Calgary 37-33. Calgary won the faceoff battle 52-48. Calgary was 1 for 6 on the power play. Montreal 0 for 5. Penalty minutes 16-14. Montreal was 16. Hits 23-17 in favor of Calgary. Blocks 22-9 in favor of Calgary. Giveaways 17-14. 17 for Montreal. So this was a giveaway game evidently. Alright, Marsham got a shutout. 37 saves. 37 saves shut out, I should say. Then Jake Allen had 31 saves for 969 save percentage. So both goalies played well. It's just Allen let the one in. Alright, Markstrom, 37 saves shut out is your first star. Jake Allen, 31 for 32 on the saves shots against, and a 969 save percentage is second star. And Johnny Gaudreau is the third star, one goal even, and 1722 time on ice. That's the win Calgary needed because they have been on a losing streak. They needed that win. So we'll see how they respond. Hopefully they keep it going. We'll see. Alright, on to a rivalry game. Colorado versus Minnesota. Now, let's see. There wasn't any real... I don't think there was a... No, there wasn't a single fight I would have that down if there was. Yeah, I mean, I believe the hitting was heavy. Actually, no, the hits were not. Wow. Alright. First period, 302 into the first in our early goal. What is going on tonight? Logan O'Connor's first from Samuel Gerard and Kale McCarr. Then at 649 of the first, Matt Dumba got his third of the year from jo uh, Jonas Brodin and Jordan Greenway. And that would be the only goal Minnesota would get. And unfortunately, Matt Dumba would get injured later on in this game. He got tangled up with Jordan Greenway's own teammate, unfortunately. And looked like he hurt his knee or leg in some way pretty badly. And they said for sure he will not be playing tomorrow. So that's unfortunate because he is one year removed from tearing that pectoral muscle. So hopefully he's not out for a too long of a period. But the reports don't sound good. I'm not going to lie to you. So I, I would not expect him to be back anytime soon. All right, 1943 into the first, Colorado takes the lead, and this would be the eventual game-winning goal. Jonas Donskoy's fourth on the power play from Brandon Saad and Andre Burakovsky. Then in the second period, 307 in, Miko Rotnet scores his seventh from Nathan McKinnon and Gabriel Landeskog. 1217 into the third, Brandon Saad scores his fourth from McKinnon and Rotnet. Then at 1455. JT Confer gets his first of the season on the power play from Burakovsky and Samuel Girard. So it's good to see Brandon Saad finally waking up in this season. <laughs> I mean, he had been, him and Kadri had been pretty much as useless as fish out of water up until this point. So good to see them both actually contributing for the last two games. And I can't imagine why Colorado's been winning. Maybe because their secondary scorers are actually helping finally. So, good for them. Good for Colorado fans. I'm sure you all are very happy about that. Let me know in the comments how happy you are to see Kadri and Saad actually getting points finally. And not being minuses each game. Alright. Colorado shot Minnesota 33-20. Faceoffs were 52-48 in favor of Minnesota. Power play 2-7 for seven for... Colorado and 0 for 2 for Minnesota. Penalty minutes 14 for Minnesota and 4 for Colorado. Hits Minnesota definitely out hit them 21 to 5. So yeah, they definitely out hit them. Blocks 18 4 in favor of Minnesota and giveaways were 3 2 with Colorado with 3. Grubauer another great outing 19 saves 950 save percentage. Kakinen honestly. He also had a great outing. He did pretty good. 28 saves for 840 save percentage. I mean, facing the talent that Colorado has, and you still do that. This kid's going to be a good goalie here in the near future. 
And honestly, he's doing pretty dang good this year. This is probably his worst outing so far. So, not too bad if this is your worst this far. And I think he's played pretty much the majority of the games at this point, it feels like. Alright, first star, Miko Rotnan. One goal, one assist, plus one, and 20-42 time on ice. Nathan McKinnon, two assists, plus one, 22-24 time on ice. And like I said, Colorado fans are probably happy about this. Brandon Saad back on the three stars list for two straight games. One goal, one assist, plus one, and 14-17 time on ice. <sighs> we had to get to this game, didn't we? Well, congratulations, Blues fans, because you definitely won this one. Ducks fans like me, can't wait for that draft. We really, really can't wait for that draft. All right, Blues won 6-1. to Truly, they won this game in the first two minutes. 20 seconds in, Jordan Cairo scored his fourth of the year from Braden Shen and Tori Krug. 57 seconds in, so... 37 seconds later, Zach Sanford's first from David Perron and Colton Paranko. Then at 2.06, just over a minute after that one, Jordan Kyrou's fifth of the year, second in the game, from Braden Shen and Jaden Schwartz. Oh, at that point, I was watching this and was like, what the fudge is happening right now? Why is this happening? Yeah, it was ugly at that point. About a minute and a half later, Ryan Gessloff decides to fight Kyle Clifford. There was, I think Clifford threw like two punches, and I don't think either one really made much of a connection, if they connected at all. And then Gessloff tackled him to the ice. Hats off to Gessloff for showing some dang leadership and getting out there and fighting somebody when your team is obviously sucking. And by the way, they pulled Gibson out there at third goal too. Put Ryan Miller in. Ducks would get one back at 16.59 in the first. Max Jones first of the year from Ricard Raquel and Ryan Getzloff. So Getzloff got it. But then it went downhill again. 7.30 in the second. David Perron's fourth from Ryan O'Reilly. Then at 2.59 in the third. Kyle Clifford's second of the year from Oscar Sundquist. And at 5.17 Vince Dunn's second on the power play from Mike Hoffman and Jordan Cairo. Yeah, really great day to be a Ducks fan. <laughs> yeah, real great. Shots on goal, 30-24 to in favor of St. Louis. Face-offs, 51-49 in favor of St. Louis. St. Louis, 1-2 for two on the power play. Ducks, continuing their awful power play, 0-3. for three. Penalty minutes, 13-11, 13-4 for St. Louis. Hits, 26-25 in favor of Anaheim. Blocks... 11-10 in favor of St. Louis. And giveaways, 16-15, and I'm with 16. Bennington for St. Louis, 23 saves, 958 save percentage. Great game for him. Gibson, 3 saves for 500 save percentage. I believe that is the worst save percentage we've seen this year. In a single game. Just this year. Not, not ever, but just this year. Ryan Miller, 21 saves, 875 save percentage. So he didn't do too bad when he came in, but he still let three in. Uh, Jordan Cairo, two two goals, one assist, plus one, and 12.51 time on ice for the first star of the game. Definitely took advantage of his time. Justin Falk, plus four, and 20 minutes, 54 seconds of time on ice. And for some weird reason, Isaac Lunderstrom of Anaheim, even, and 15.20 a time on ice. Falk, okay, I can get it. He's plus four. All right, fine, fine, that's fine. Isaac Lundstrom of Anaheim. Why is he on the star list? What did he do? Yes, he played fifteen minutes. He did nothing. I mean, for God's sake, there were other people in St. Louis. Look at Shen had two assists in the first two minutes of the game. Come on, Dave Braun a goal and assist. Ugh. I, I don't understand the three stars. I really don't. Why is Lundstrom a star? He's not. All right, last game of the night. I'm sure this video is getting to be really long at this point, so I'm sorry ahead of time. Vancouver versus Winnipeg. Vancouver wins this one 4-1. to one. Vancouver opens the scoring 29 seconds into the game. 
Brock Besser, 7th from Alex Edler and Elias Patterson. 2.03 into the first. Winnipeg gets their first and only goal. Mason Appleton's first from Adam Lowry. Then 8.17, the game-winning goal. Nils Hoglander, third of the season from Bo Horvat and Tanner Pearson. 6.58 into the second. Zach McEwen gets his first of the year from Jordy Ben and JT Miller. JT Miller's been really good this year, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, but he's had a great year. And Brock Besser has really started going here now, so I believe he leads the league in Coles now, does he? Or he's close to. So 17.59 into the third, Brock Besser is eighth from Nate Schmidt. All right. Vancouver outshot Winnipeg 39-24. Uh, Faceoffs 55-45 in favor of Vancouver. Vancouver 0 for 3 on the power play. Winnipeg 0 for 1. Penalty minutes 10 to 6. Winnipeg with 10. Hits 14 10. Winnipeg, uh, not Winnipeg. Vancouver winning in that category. Both teams with 12 blocks. And unfortunately for Winnipeg, they have 15 giveaways to 7 for Vancouver. Thatcher, Thatcher Demko, 23 saves, 958 save percentage. Had a good game. And Connor Hellebuck. If it wasn't for Connor Hellebuck, this would have been a much uglier game than it was. He had a great game. Really great game. Even though he was a losing goalie, he still allowed three goals in, but there are four goals, I'm sorry. Four goals in. But still, 921 save percentage, he still had a great game. Brock Besser, two goals, one assist, plus one, and 17.49 at time on ice. Thatcher Demko's your second star, 23 for 24 on the save shots against, and a 958 save percentage. Connor Hellebuck, why did I say 39 saves in here, or 39 shots, where here's 38. I'm guessing there was one empty netter then. Hellebuck, 35 for 38, saves the shots against for a 921 save percentage. All right, we made it through all 12 games for today. I believe there are six for tomorrow, so not as bad. Or, not, well, not as many games. I shouldn't say not as bad. They're starting to even out from here on out. I believe they're going back to like six or seven a day. I don't think we haven't heard 10 or 12 a day for a little while. So, last real long one for a little bit at least. So, thank you for sticking with me through this whole video if you did. And make sure to subscribe if you have not already. And make sure to like, comment, and share. And other than that, I will see you all next video tomorrow. I should say. <laughs> I'll see you all tomorrow. And bye everybody.